We are standing in front of the Grand Design Reflection 28 RL. This is part of their 100 series, and we put it to the test. Mm -hmm. We've been staying in this thing for two weeks, traveling all over the place because we feel like the best way to review and know the ins and outs of an RV is to live in it for a while. Yes, so that's what we did. Mm -hmm. And we have a lot of opinions about this, this small entry level fifth wheel, which is what it is. It's, it's a great value for, I think, what you get for the price. MSRP, I believe, is around $57,000. We'll put the exact amount on the screen, but of course, you know, negotiate your way below that. Yes. So their 100 series line is an entry level fifth wheel mm -hmm. line. And it's great because there's a lot going on inside of this RV. But first, we're going to take you and show you the business side of this RV, which is all around the other side on the outside where Chad, this is business. <laughs> where the, the business side where I do all my poop dumping. Let's go. <laughs> so real quick, the numbers on this guy. It has a GVWR of 10,995 pounds. We're just going to call it 11,000 pounds because <laughs> it's just silly. I'm sure that five pounds has something to do with some kind of rating or something. The unloaded vehicle weight on average of this is 8,362 pounds with a pin weight of about 1,350 pounds. So this is towable by a wide range of pickups. I'm not going to say this is like a 150 or whatever. Do your own math, figure out your stuff, but pin weight of 1348, GVWR of 10,000, basically 11,000. Guys, if you want some help in doing the math, we do have a video on that. Mm -hmm. Like most fifth wheels of this nature, we've got a 30 pound propane tank over here, matching one on the other side with an automatic switch over regulator. This bay here will not fit a 40 like our big TH will, but 30s, you know, are, are the stock anyway. Moving over here, to our wet bay. This is really nice because it has a lot of storage, especially for a small straight frame trailer like this. You can see we've got pass through all the way through here and we've got our standard Nautilus panel, which is always great because you just follow the color patterns. And same patterns as you're used to, right? <laughs> yeah, you know, I don't know because I always look at the little cheat sheet here and oh. I just turn the knobs the way the pictures tell me. I don't memorize it because why okay. bother? It's right there. Okay. <laughs> it might be a little bit different for each model, but it's really cool because switching from shore water to internal water or, or whatever is really super simple. The one thing that this thing has that our big TH doesn't have is the on off switch for the pump is a quick toggle that toggles it on and off just like on the inside. So I don't have to go on the inside to turn the pump on and off to switch back and forth between shore and internal water. Cool. Speaking of internal water, this thing has a 55 gallon fresh tank. Gray and black tanks are all 39 gallons. So we've got two gray tanks for a total of 78 gallons of gray, a front one for the bathroom, rear one for the uh, kitchen. The black tank is also 39 gallons. And if, just like all of them, you can access them all right here. They all come out through a single dump hole down here. Like others, it also has all your satellite connections. It has a uh, shower connection out here. And also like most, you wanna make sure these are closed because if those are open, it allows bleed over from the hot to the cold. Well, I also like that you've got this little plastic like wet bay down here for when fresh water inevitably leaks out of there or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's designed to be wet in there, so that's cool. Also up in here, before I close this, we do have the Lippert uh, electronic leveling. It's electric, not hydraulic. So that's really nice. It's, it's a little bit more manual than our hydraulic six point leveling system, but it's still great to be able to hit that auto level button and walk away and let it do its own thing. You'll also see that we always carry extra fire extinguishers and we've got them on both sides. So speaking of hot water, this is our water heater. It is a tankless water heater, so it's instant hot water. This particular model is a Girard, which is of course owned by Lippert. It is a 45,000 BTU heater. We tested this guy against our standard tank water heater and we go all into all the details of what we like and don't like, so be sure to check that out. Speaking of heating stuff, this is the furnace. This is a 30,000 BTU furnace. Uh, it does really well. We noticed it is a little bit louder than our Suburban because this is a Dometic, but it did a really good job of, of heating. And of course, like a lot of these, the basement and the underbelly is all heated. This is a four season rated RV and we've been in the, the low 20s recently. <laughs> 
It, it did, did just fine, it's great, mm -hmm. yeah. As you can see, this is a dual axle model. Uh, this does have 15 inch E-rated tires on it and standard suspension like you're gonna have in, in a unit like this. We have been riding around on this suspension for a couple of weeks mm. and it's been doing just fine. Yeah, you know, it, it's such a light trailer. We really didn't feel it on any bumps or anything. The stock suspension on this- Except is, for on 26 because everything- But you feel everything. <laughs> you, feel, you feel everything on Interstate 26. Yeah, you do. All right, let's go inside. Okay, hey, do you wanna show them how to get up on the roof? Oh yeah. Let's go back this way. You get on the roof with a ladder. <laughs> nice thing is it's on the back versus the side, so it doesn't have to be folded up. It's always right there. Because mm -hmm. you want to check your roof out and inspect it all the time before every travel. Since we didn't show you on the other side, before we go in, let's show you the basement storage over here. The sucker's dirty, see? Yeah, Road don't pay no tested. attention. Road tested. <laughs> pay no attention to the dirt. <laughs> the dirt is experienced. So there is a lot of storage in this in yeah. this basement. Get in there and show them. Nope. Like just stick your hands and stuff face in there. <laughs> we need a we need a frame of reference. Ta da! <laughs> yeah. But it does pass all the way through it. It is quite a bit of storage for this size of wheel. It is, it for, is sure. for a 31 foot fifth wheel. There's a lot of storage in here, so that's great. You may be used to seeing us in our Momentum 410 TH, and that's a high end, top tier line for Grand Design. This is, again, their entry level, so it's not going to have all of the bells and whistles like ours has. For example, this is Moride. However, it doesn't have the hydraulic system built into it like ours does, but I can still lift them up and down, no problem. I do not struggle, so that's a good thing. They are heavier, but it's, it's, yeah. not, it's not difficult. We do also have a big awning out here that is lit. I believe it's a 15 foot awning. I'm not sure we'll put it on the screen. There are two slide outs on this unit. Here's one, and then another one on the other side of the living room. There are no slide outs in the bedroom section. Hi, baby. You can probably hear Daisy eating. <laughs> <laughs> Her food and water bowl is right here, right when you walk in. It's not really my favorite place to put it, but it's really the only place to put it, I think, in this RV, because on the other side of the island, on the floor, is the heat vents, and that wouldn't be good to have a heat vent blowing right on Daisy's food. <laughs> Okay, per usual in our tours, we're gonna start at the nose and head back to the tail. So let's go on up. We're gonna bypass the bathroom for now and take you right up to the bedroom. Excuse me while I do the side shuffle. <laughs> as you can see, it is a Northwest bed, which has its advantages as far as draftiness of not being in a slide. I think it's really hard for us to to review oh my gosh well hold on a second i got a dog who's really come here hey you're interrupting the tour yeah hey um, chill i think it's hard for us to review bedrooms when we're so used to our large spacious bedroom in the 410 and even in the 397 we had a lot more space to move around outside of the bed so and this has probably been the biggest struggle I think for us both is the size of this bedroom. Now also keep in mind that we haven't set this RV up to live in like we would if we were actually going to travel in it for an extended period of time or to live in it. I think there are a lot of modifications that you could do to make it better and more convenient. I didn't mind the north-south facing bed. I didn't mind that at all. You're not gonna have slides in here because again, this is entry level fifth wheel. I think if there was like a wardrobe slide over here giving you more space, I think that that would obviously give you more space. <laughs> you, you silly. Jerk. But I do really like the little nightstand tables. On oh yeah, those are, it's, nice, it's nice having big nightstands so for having, sure. Yeah, and this is a queen size bed. I don't even know if you can get a king size bed in here. I don't think I'd recommend it because you can barely get through here as it is. But if it is a king, it probably goes all the way to the wall. A, we're used to a king size bed. I don't really like to be like Ew. all up next to her. When you stay over on your side. He Stay snores. on your side. <laughs> I like that there's storage up above. I like that there's storage in here. Now I packed a lot and I did it for you guys. <laughs> yeah, that's I why. packed a lot of clothes. Well, because you know, we're traveling to South Carolina and to Ohio and to North Carolina and the temperatures are fluctuating and I needed a lot of stuff. And I also wanted to just see how much stuff it would hold. Daisy. Why do you got to just chill? And it does hold quite a bit. 
but not as much as I'm used to. But that's, you know, yeah. that's fine. One thing that I like, but I also don't like is this, okay? So I like the concept of having a little extra like nightstand type of thing where you can put your phone, you can charge it up here. But I wanna show you, if you wanna read in bed, it's really difficult. Because we're in the front cap here, the headboard is concave, making it a little difficult. <laughs> You'd have to get some sort of uh, wedge or something to put in there to sit yeah. against Hi. to read in bed. Hi. Uh, again, a lot of these things are solvable, uh, but we just didn't solve them because we're not in here long enough. Correct, yes. Lots of storage options on the sides of the bed and up here. The wardrobe is pretty small. It's to be expected. Um, but there's still a lot of space that we didn't use in here. I left space for shoes for Chad and different things for Chad, but he didn't use it. He just hung some clothes up in there. There's also this cubby down here, right? So there's, I, I put boots and stuff down in there. Just... See how deep it goes. <laughs> <laughs> and then these drawers are pretty big and they do hold a lot. This was Chad's drawer. He didn't utilize it. <laughs> and then that's it. So this is where the TV would go. Of course, you got the underbed storage. Yep. And yep. it's got my sauna in there, my portable sauna. <laughs> so the portable sauna is taking up a lot of space. What do you think, Daisy? Whee! <laughs> you guys are going to see a mismatching of carpets and rugs and stuff in here. And we basically took things out of our 410 to use on this trip because we're not going to buy stuff that fits. However, one thing that we didn't think about until we got going were the steps to get up here. This little one can't get up and down the steps without some kind of carpet. I found these on Amazon. They are adhesive, but they're the kind that just come up and down. And I'd even run the vacuum cleaner over these and they did not budge. And they came in a four pack. So we put two here and then two on the steps coming up so that she can get up and down. She still prefers to have the entire step in the step front covered but for a temporary solution, and it was like 19 bucks, it was worth it for her. So if you're interested, we'll put a link for these down below because these could come in handy. There are some things that I think could make this space more useful if you're going to live in it or if this was your RV. Maybe some hooks here or here for coats, jackets, or whatever, scarves, hats, because there's really no place to put them. You're gonna see when we show you down here that our coats and stuff are just kind of hanging on the chairs. That looks messy really fast. Also, no full length mirror if you want one i think this would be a great spot for it because you can stand in the bathroom and you can see otherwise there's really no place for you to see and have a full length mirror in that bedroom so this would be a good place for that you could still put more hooks for hats coats or whatever up here on the walls now this bathroom was interesting to me because it reminded me a lot of the 397 that we had our first rv didn't you kind of feel that yeah, way too yeah. come on in i'll show you what i'm talking about so the layout's very similar with the toilet in the corner here the shower here and the sink here the shower is much smaller than the shower we have currently and and the shower that we had in our momentum 397. there's plenty of plenty of headroom yes so i had no problem taking a shower right but i banged my head on this thing a couple times did you really well because it, it, it's just right out of my line of yeah. sight yeah and then I would, I would go to just step out of the shower and bang my head on it. I don't have that problem. <laughs> but that's a, that's a self-training yeah, kind of thing. I don't have that problem. Um, this thing, although I don't think, I think is meant to just be straight out, it wouldn't hit my head. So I would just kind of lift it up yeah, and I angle the same it down thing. a little yeah. bit. But that's no big deal. The shower itself was great. I mean, it was spacious enough. I didn't feel claustrophobic in here, even though it's small. Yeah, not a bit. I had a great shower. I do like that the tempered glass is textured, so it's going to show less watermarks and soap scum and stuff than than the one that we have. Now, the storage space in... Let's start here. Big. Huge. I really, really like the medicine cabinet. I think if it were ours, I may have asked, may ask you to put like another shelf in here for smaller things mm -hmm. or something. Um, but I like having this for fast access stuff down here. Nothing has fallen out. When we've traveled, I haven't had anything jump out at me. So that's a bonus because there's just a tiny little lip, but it keeps things in place. Something I'm not a real big fan of, but it's not a big deal, is this flat bottom sink. I don't really know why it's like that. Do you? I mean, flat it's just hard to get stuff down the drain. Flat bottom sinks make the rock and roll go around. Yeah, I was waiting. I was waiting for that. And then the <laughs> other little thing that is easily solvable on your own. Okay, the towel's up here, but it's not really 
Yeah, when they hung when they hung that, they hung it at a kind of a weird. Place. I think that they hung it too low, so the towel kind of hangs in the sink, and to me, it just is in a bad spot. So we've yeah. just sort of been hanging out like this. Yeah, if we were if we were staying in this RV, we would just move it, obviously. Yeah, we would move it there or maybe over here. You can still do a lot with this space. Over here on this side is a small storage cubby. It doesn't really hold that many towels. This bar, I believe, is to hang your shower towels on, but I don't really. I'm not a big fan of hanging my towels right above the toilet. <laughs> what we do in our 410 and in our 397 is we have the shower command hooks mm -hmm. and we hang our towels on, on those. Those have not fallen off in the six years now that we've had them. I don't know about on these textured lumpy walls though. Yeah, it's got some smoother uh, squares and in there too. And honestly the shower is smaller so if we had them hanging here they would get wet in the shower. So we'd probably hang them in there for storage but then hang them over when we're actually showering. The toilet has been functioning great. These Standard are, RV toilet. These, yeah but the thing is though it's still the soft top. clothes mm -hmm. so that's nice. Standard pedal. There's decent storage in here, guys. Again, if this were our RV, I would have some more permanent solutions for like shelving and stuff. As of now, it's just got a bunch of my crap thrown in there. The drawers are pretty big and hold quite a bit of stuff. Decent amount of storage for a, a small RV like this one. And then the fan is something we had to get used to. Yeah. And I'm short, so I really have to stretch. To, to open it up. So yeah. you first have to do this. This is one of those manu manual fans. And it's kind of noisy and it's kind of... It, it's not easy for a <laughs> yeah. shorty like me. Yeah, we, we're used to the kind where you push a button and it opens and turns the fan on. But, but it does that's its an job, right? That's an easy swap out. We've got a video on yeah, that. It does its job. And then there is this option for a, a motion sensor light. If you turn it on, you can either have it as a regular light or it can be like motion sensor if you need it. See, we don't really use that though. Shall we go to the living area? Let's go. Well, you'll see that both the bedroom and the bathroom have these. This is a pocket door and then the bedroom has a barn style door. Like so. Hi. Show them how you go down, Daisy. Good job. <laughs> and all these rugs and stuff came from the 410, so it doesn't necessarily match anything, but I like to have rugs under my feet when I'm cooking, when we walk in, and Daisy needs them to eat. I think that one of my favorite things about this kitchen setup is this hutch right here. A lot of storage, a great coffee bar yeah. or prep space, whatever you want to use it for, right? It's very deep, it's very high, so you can have a lot of different appliances or whatever you want to put on here. For us, we just have the basics. We've got to have the Berkey because I got to travel with the filters of, for the water and the coffee, of course. I struggled with finding a flow for where to put pantry items because there is no dedicated pantry. So I use a lot of these drawers for pantry stuff. As you can see, I'll show you our junk cabinet. <laughs> <laughs> where all the snacks are hidden. <laughs> yeah. So after we have the green juices, then we can have snacks. But yeah, lots of lots of storage. This, Full size family of Fruit Loops with marshmallows. This is like this is the big this is <laughs> this is the big box too. So it fits up there. This mm -hmm. is the family size. Yeah, I notice it even does. Yeah, just from my angle. Just just barely slide inside. <laughs> so, but look, so there's a ton of space that we didn't use. These are just all my meds and supplements. Yes, it fills up that box. We brought like a few plates, a few bowls, a couple of spoons, forks, just enough to get us by. You can also store stuff in these cabinets under here. Drawers, this is all coffee all day. Distribution panel. Distribution panel. More pantry stuff. Also storage is this bench seating. Yeah, that's nice. Dinette. So this has what's called the Compass Connect. It's kind of similar to the Lippert One Control where you've got all the kind of stuff in one thing. It's not as, you know, fancy, but it does have Bluetooth access. I'm not sure if you can access it over Wi-Fi and things like that. 
But the thing that I do like about this is you might see it's motion activated. So when you walk up, you get an instant indication of all four of your tanks. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's very intelligent in that when the fresh goes down below two thirds, it turns red. When either of the two grays or the black gets above two thirds, they turn red. So you get an instant notification when you're walking by and go, oh, great tanks filling up, that kind of thing. All your lights and switches and everything, your slide controls, on and controls all right here so that is super super cool yes and like i said you do have the bluetooth app where you can control all of this stuff through the app uh, directly below it the ac units on here are furion i'm not sure of the capacity i want to say they're 15,000 btu it could be 13.5 i'm not real sure but we do have two of them which is plenty mm -hmm. for this size of space the one downside is it does not have a heat pump so your only source of heat is going to be your furnace that is also connected through this furion system and of course you have the fireplace which we'll show you in a minute right or space heaters we like to use those when we're camping with full electric because why not use the free electricity yeah also, I didn't say it, but that water heater is also propane. The, yeah. the, instant, the instant on hot water heater. Let's talk kitchen. Let's talk kitchen. All right, I showed you the storage area, which I think would become the pantry area for us. This is a very nice size island, I think, especially for a 31 foot RV. There's plenty of space. I do like that it comes with this metal rollout. I don't know what the technical term is, but when you wash dishes, if you want, you can just send them up here, send them here to dry. When you just have a mug or something, it's yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A changing lanes mug. You can get them in our store. This is kind of what I'm used to cooking on in the 397. It's a small, um, it does fit the smaller pans. Tiny, tiny little cookie sheets. Up here, it's a gas stove top, so three burner. I usually use one at a time, but sometimes I have used two since we've been cooking in here and it does fine. I mean, I have no problem lighting the burners. I have no problem lighting the oven itself. The microwave. It's smaller. It's smaller. It's basic. It's lacking in a couple of important features. I think like one, but one in particular, the, the 30, 30 second, second button, button like, the quick, <laughs> like the quick select here, you have to type in how long you want it. I know that sounds silly, but we're so used to a quick one minute or a quick 30 second thing and that's not on here because let's, let's face it no matter what time you want if you want 10 seconds you're not going to punch in 10 seconds you're going to hit the 30 second button but it does its job it is a microwave and that's it it's not convection just microwave i do like that this has a quick easy fan light only or light and fan option personally i wish there was a window right there but again, we are at the 100 series and that's not a make or break it thing for me. I'm just used to having a window up here. So it's just nice for extra light. Mm -hmm. But as you can see, there's plenty of natural light coming through and we have three windows with yeah. the blinds closed. Back to this side over here, tons of storage underneath the oven. Lots of storage over here. The cabinets are solid. These things are solid. These things are not cheap plywood feeling stuff. These things are solid. They really are secure in there. I mean, to the point where sometimes I'm actually having to pull pretty hard to get them open. Cheers, but sir. they're solid. They feel they feel really good. Lots of room under the sink too. Under the sink has more space, I think, than our 410. Now, right now, this is just a bag of bags. <laughs> bag of bags. Again, if this were ours, we would have some shelving set up in there, some stable shelving that doesn't um, fall over and stuff during travel. But for this short amount of time, it was perfect. And there's also a lot of space in here. I've got four mixing bowls in there. I've got my salad spinner, big salad bowls, popcorn maker, and then I barely have anything up on this top shelf. So there's still a ton of storage in here. Now the fridge. I think it's 11 cubic feet. I'm not real sure. It's but... a smaller fridge. You can see uh, we just went shopping yesterday to stock up for Christmas and it's full and it's kind of hard to get to things, but it still holds plenty, right? And, yeah. it's, and it's been doing a great job. I do like that we can run it when we're traveling. That's great. Yeah, it, this is a DC fridge. It's not a DC slash propane fridge. It's right. an actual compressor fridge, which is awesome. Yeah. Runs off DC. Grab. Can you grab our thermometer sure. thing down there? Sure. You want to show them the freezer? Yeah. Freezer has plenty of room. Mm -hmm. 
And just like we do any in any of our RVs, uh, we monitor, that's a little high, 38 and 10. It's been a lot lower. I turned it down a little bit last night because it kept kicking on. <laughs> oh yeah, it has it has been running um, at really good temperatures, so we feel pretty good about it. But yeah, that is a little higher than normal. Something that I love about this particular 28 RL is the living space. This is a lot of living space. So yeah. you can clearly see that you can fit two adults here, two adults here. These two are recliners. There's also seat heat. We also have a little secret storage compartment oh, down here. You didn't know I was there? No, it's a secret. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, why isn't she showing the little secret compartment it's there? It's secret. I didn't even know it was there. This does open up into a, what you call a jackknife, right? Like a jackknife. Well, I think it says folding sofa, but yeah, I think it's jackknife. It's kind of like a jackknife. So it folds down into a bed. I don't know how comfortable that would be. If you wanted to work from the road and you wanted some desk space, this would be an awesome space to put a desk or two right mm -hmm. here because you can look out. You've also got these awesome on both sides storage cubbies. One thing that I'm going to suggest to Grand Design is that they make them accessible with a flip top as well. Because if you've got larger items like blankets and stuff, it's easier, I think, if you could just open this up and plop them in. Got one on each side. Yes. And then we've got up top, camera so, bag. <laughs> You never know if you're living in this full time or traveling for months at a time. This might be food. This might be clothes. That's just a mess of junk. Mess of junk. <laughs> right. This is the entertainment section, but there's also storage over here too. Great, great storage. So maybe, maybe this is pantry, but maybe, that's, also maybe like dry, you know, dry yeah. goods. It's stuff. by the fireplace. So I don't know how, if these get hot. I don't think so. Don't the, think the, so. The, the, the vent blows straight out this way. So look at this ginormous drawer that we didn't even use. Oh, we had a Christmas tree in here that I forgot that we even had in there. And I hit it. You hit it because you got tired of it. <laughs> I got tired of it being on the table. Yeah, but look, there's all this storage. This is tech cabinet. You'll see in our travels, we've got our uh, Pepway router that we've been using while we travel. Mm -hmm. We got to have internet. That is a uh, Stereo system, you'll notice we do have speakers in the ceiling up here, and we haven't really used it. Here. I haven't used it at all. As Chad mentioned, this is the other source of heat for this unit. Which we have used pretty much 24 seven. We've got this, and we've got a Dyson space heater that we have used uh, while we've been staying out in the winter in sub-freezing temperatures. Yes, we like this fireplace, but we would prefer a few things like being able to turn the lights off of the fake flames. Unless we're missing something, the light's always on. So if you wanted yeah. to be out here or if you were sleeping out here, you've got to deal with the lights being on. And those are those are minor things. I think it might be one of those safety things where they say, hey, if it's creating heat, we want fire looking stuff on the front to remind you that it's actually on. Lastly, how we've been using this space because if you followed us for any amount of time, you know that our RV is a toy hauler and that garage becomes our office when we are in a new location. So here we don't have a dedicated office space. The dinette has become our office and it's cramped. This could be kids' homework space or it could be your workspace. It's not that comfortable as far as for a workstation is concerned, but it is spacious enough to eat. And if it was just us two, we would probably only have one chair on this side and then this bench seating over here. This table does pull out and turn. I like that a lot. And look, I miss this. Oh, uh, we had that in our first RV, yeah. I know. I miss I miss having storage in the chairs. I know that sounds like a little thing. That's where all of our camp brochures go. That's where all our camp brochures go. This is just a temporary fix for us. And if we were living in it, there are a lot of things we would do differently and tweak to make our own. But that's every RV, right? I mm -hmm. mean, it doesn't matter how much space you have, you're going to tweak it to make it your own. The biggest plus for this 28 RL is how spacious it is in here. It's so big in here. The living space feels just as big as the living space in our 410. Yeah, maybe a little bigger. So we had a great 
time staying in this RV for two weeks to really get a feel for it and get a feel for what a, an RV that's obviously much smaller than our 48 foot TH <laughs> is. It's been a lot of fun mm -hmm. and we are hoping that maybe we can do more of this kind of testing out. So if there are any particular Grand Design models that you want to see us live in for a couple weeks and try out, let us know in the comments. If you have a 28 RL, let us know if you've adapted to some of these things that we've said were things that we would change or we'd love to see pictures of how you've made it your own. So share those with us as well. We've put it to the test. We drove it on bad roads, all that <laughs> stuff. No leaking. We've been in a downpour oh, yeah. and all of that and we've had no problems with this one and it's been great. So I just put my head around that. We basically did a full shakedown yeah, that's what cruise I'm yes. and really had nothing go wrong. If you're not subscribed, please do so so that you don't miss any of our upcoming trials of different RVs and whatever else we may get into. Per usual, we'll have links for all the stuff we talked about, the specs, any products that we've shown. We'll have links for that stuff down below. We really appreciate it if you do use our links, if you buy any of our stuff. That's how we keep this channel running.